Hello and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Today is my third Oktoberfest roundup. And uh, unlike the previous editions, I'll be drinking these ones on camera. Yay! Which means I'll probably be, probably be pouring out a good deal of beer <laughs> later this afternoon. Because, uh, yeah, five beers in an afternoon is probably a bit stiff for me. So these are all uh, Marzen, 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 uh, German for March. We'll get into that briefly. Uh, or Oktoberfest beers. Any beer that is sold as an Oktoberfest is a Marzen, Marzen style. Uh, Marzen is closely related to Vienna lagers. And yeah. So uh, it's a style uh, developed in Germany, obviously. That's where Oktoberfest is primarily celebrated. And it was produced in response to regulation. Germany loves their beer regulation. Uh, that uh, stipulated that beer could not be brewed during the summer months. They didn't exactly know why, but it was, you know, they had a higher rate of bad beers brewed during the warmer months because warmer temperatures means more bacteria, means etc, etc, etc. So it was a, um, it was a regulation in response to an observed but not understood phenomena. And it resulted in the breweries working really hard in the early and mid spring to get all their beers brewed and then they could be stored or lagered. Um, so these are lagers specifically, not ales, lagers. So that's a uh, cold fermented beers um, or the yeast typically works in colder temperatures. Um, so they would then be lagered over the course of the summer and then tapped in September, not October. It is the eighth month and September is, August is the eighth month, it's August. Anyways, they're open to September, not October. <laughs> uh, so that's the, the brief history. Um, they are typically a, a sweet, lightly hopped, uh, malty, or slightly sweet, lightly hopped, very malty uh, lager. And you'll typically find them very bread-like flavors. Um, and it's not always just one like very narrow beer style too. There's actually been a good amount of variation in the uh, Marzen, Marzen Oktoberfest style over the years. And that's just, you know, the nature of beer, how things work. So today, alphabetically, I have the Eyinger, uh, the which is from Germany, from Bavaria, the Breckenridge Brewery, Oktoberfest, the Paulaner, Munchen, that's Munich, uh, the Sam Adams, and the Widmer. I don't know if I've had the Breckenridge, Paulaner, or Widmer prior to this year. Uh, I saw them on the shelf, and so I, when I was looking at you know selections available Oktoberfests, uh, ones that I particularly enjoyed last year and the year before, uh, Great Divides Haas is a delicious Oktoberfest, super malty, slightly sweet, almost no bitterness, just really, really, really drinkable. Um, Black Raven's Flocktoberfest, also delicious. Perhaps a little more complex than, than uh, Great Divides Haas, but very good. I also have really enjoyed the Sam Adams. The Sam Adams produces a deliciously drinkable Oktoberfest. Um, it is, as I understand it, one of the like largest volume produced Oktoberfest beers and most uh, most drunk Oktoberfest beer. So that's uh, it's kind of a deserved, a well earned reputation um, amongst craft beer snobs and regular beer people alike. Uh, so that's we'll 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 try that <laughs> again. But I remember liking that one last year. The others I don't recall having had. I might have had the Breckenridge, but I'd really have to go check my notes or go look at you know last year and the year before's uh, videos. They were actually the very first beer review videos that I, re that I uh, posted or recorded. Um, it was after drinking a collection of Oktoberfests uh, two years ago that I recorded uh, something about it and posted it on my personal channel. And then last year I did it and I thought, hey, I kind of enjoy this. And so after last year's video, I just kept recording. <laughs> Look where it's got me now. Yay. 
anyways, I've got, uh, let's see, separate glasses for each, and I don't have matching glasses, so hey, good old ball jars. They're nicely shaped, they've got a big enough interior, and they come together a little bit at the top, so they'll hold the flavors in, so hey, you know, don't knock it, it works. Let's start with the uh, anger. And I'll try to pour the... Mmm. That smells so good. Now, the last couple years, I was less than enthused with angers. I felt like there was a bit of tinniness to it. Um, and so I'm not sure. I don't know if it's just a packing thing or, or what. But I have noticed that same, um, I don't know, not almost a metallic kind of note in some of the other Oktoberfests or Marisons I've had, Marisons I've had. And so I don't know if it's shipping or, or what, um, but people keep saying it's a really good example of the craft. Like, you know, it's always at the top of lists. Um, incidentally, Great Divides Haas is also typically at the top of the list. So um, I don't know. We'll see. Keep giving it a try. Uh, maybe I don't understand the style well enough. As always, this is my experience of these beers. Not necessarily the right thing. You know, we, we experience beer by ourselves or as ourselves, as who we are. We don't, um, any one individual is not a gold standard of beer. Someone become, should, theoretically, become respected in their tastes for having um, you know, maybe for being consistent or for having flavor, a palate whose um, uh, likes uh, match up with a wide range of other people's likes. And so, um, you, know, you, you talk, you think about the, the names that come to mind when you think about people whose um, beer tastes you respect and you, you, you can't think of them, well, their palate is the gold standard. It's, it's do, does their palate align with yours? That's, that's really what you should be looking at. Let's get some notes on the heads here. So, I haven't finished pouring them. The Anger is a little bit less creamy of a head, and definitely on the lighter side, hue-wise. I would say the the Breckenridge is probably darkest, followed by the Oktoberfest, followed by the Pollyanner, followed by the Ianger. And finally the Widmer. Okay, so these are all lined up alphabetically here and here, so they correspond. Um, yeah, the Widmer's on the lighter side. I noticed uh, their heads were typically a little bit closer to tan when I first poured them. And they've all kind of faded to white since then. Um, the Breckenridge lost its head pretty fast. And... Oh, there it is. It comes back. But it, it faded pretty quickly. The Pauliner... This one had an interesting more of an earthy color, like there's more brown to it. Then the Sam Adams. Oh, that poured really creamy to begin with. I noticed when I bring the head back up, it, it is a little bit less creamy. But yeah, the Polaner is definitely less creamy. The bubbles are just bigger in the Polaner. And the Breckenridge is on the lighter side of things. And once again, you kind of have that tan head. Let's see what they smell like. First, the Anger. Hmm, spaghetti, like, like cooked spaghetti noodles, no sauce, no salt, no pepper, no oils. That would be maltiness. Um, maybe a touch of an herbaceousness. Sweet. Yeah, just really a lot of malts. Um, nicely rounded. There's there's a few different things going on. The malts seem to have some character. They're not just malts. They're they they, they kind of smell like something identifiable. Um, Breckenridge. Oh, this is very different. 
Um, so I would say anger has some warmth to the flavor, maybe some fullness, maybe like a um, warm, fresh baked bread almost. Whereas the Breckenridge is more, more grain, um, maybe a bit more of the alcohol. That same herbaceousness. Yeah, there's a bit more of a, an alcohol bite to the Breckenridge. And the, the flavor is just, or the, the smell is just maybe a little bit thinner. Now to the Pauliner. Um, oh, interesting note. Um, in Germany, in order to be called an Oktoberfest, it must uh, abide by all the rules. And so there's only like five breweries that are actually allowed to call themselves an Oktoberfest beer in Germany. And Pauliner is one of them. I did not see if Anger was one of them, but, um, oh, it's Barish's beer. I think Barish is allowed. So yeah, so so these are, these two are actually official per German law Oktoberfest beers. And the others being American beers, they don't have to abide by the same rules, so they can call themselves whatever they please. Oh, a lot grassier. I mean, there's still the maltiness in there, but but it's kind of a funkiness, uh, farmyard fields, and not necessarily fields of flowers. This would be um, almost an alfalfa field. That's interesting. Let's compare that. Um, so in here, it's almost a, an apricot jam. In here, it's like an alfalfa field, but they're kind of the same flavor, just different intensities. That's kind of interesting. Okay, Sam Adams. Well, that's weird. Almost had a whiff of something pineapple. Um, not quite as thin as the Breckenridge. I would say it's probably in between these three. You know, the Polaner being kind of this grassy alfalfa, the, the Breckenridge being this more thin, um, but more malty and, and possibly more al alcoholic, and the Anger being kind of this really broad, warm maltiness. The Sam Adams kind of splits the middle. I can, t I can smell notes of all of them, plus kind of this it's a little more fruit sweetness which I think is where I'm getting that pineapple notes. It's very interesting. Hmm. And while that's pineapple, this is almost a, a grape juice, the Widmer Brothers. Let's hold those flavors in for a minute. Let's see what comes up. Yeah, there's some maltiness. It's, I would say it's probably in between the Sam Adams and the Breckenridge. It's very interesting the, the differences between the American, the US made Oktoberfest beers and the German made Oktoberfest beers. These are, are, are much thicker smelling, um, bigger, more uh, robust, even maybe even more, more complicated, more different things going on. Um, and while these aren't simple, they definitely have a different character. And it's very interesting to me how, how the two different groupings are. Um, like these are almost clearly a family. And these are almost clearly a family, even in their differences. Um, well, let's go in and give a taste. So this is the Anger Oktoberfest. Marzen, authentic Bavarian festival lager. Hmm. Nope, not getting the tenniness this time. This is a good beer. This is a really good beer. Um, it's. It's a lot different if you're an you know an ale fan or something. I mean, I like beer. It doesn't matter what type, really. There's only a few broad styles I have more of an issue with. Um, 
but this has it's sweet but not candy or cloying it's malty but not chewy it's um there's some grassiness herbaceousness that's just kind of really interesting and kind of wanders around there and frankly now that i've swallowed that's what's left in my mouth which is kind of interesting it makes me want to drink more um <laughs> there's some beers where they taste great and then the linger is kind of so-so this the taste is good and the linger is well it makes you want to drink more beer so it's really smooth it's really drinkable i mean you could knock these back there's definitely a bitterness there but it's just kind of around the edges. Well, it's not like on the sides of my mouth. I'm tasting it across like the the back half of my tongue is where the bitterness mostly comes in. Uh, but it's not a... It, it, it plays nicely, even though it's quite distinct from that, from the sweet maltiness. Hmm. That's good stuff. Um, and as I am not tasting any of the tinniness, I am guessing that my previous bottles of anger might have suffered during transit. Uh, this one is imported to Tacoma, so it's imported to near here. I don't see a date marker on it, so I do not know when it was, when it was um, bottled. It does say 20L2081. That's the only kind of stamp there. And there's nothing on the cap. So I cannot tell uh, when it was bottled. Um, it wasn't a singles at my local uh, Total Wine. But this one is, I'm not tasting that tinniness. And considering I tasted that tinniness two years in a row, I think I'd be able to identify it again. Now, let's try Breckenridge. So this is a U.S.-made, uh, U.S.-brewed Oktoberfest. Breckenridge Oktoberfest Mars and Lager. Toasty malt character with a clean, dry finish. Hmm. Okay, you can tell they're in the same family. This is a much simpler beer. There's none of that grassiness going on. There is a very, the sweetness is very similar, so it's it's in family. Um, it's almost no hop. Like I'm not catching any any hops at all. But I guess without that grassiness, you know, you're it it, it would have only just been the the bitter biting. I guess on second drink, there's a little bit more. These are out, out of my fridge for perhaps an hour. Um, you would typically drink a German beer style at close to room temperature or cool, not refrigerated. Um, so I would expect this to be more typical. Uh, so for U.S., if you're used to American beers and they're really strong flavors, typically speaking, you want to drink those colder. And when they warm up, some of the flavors that will come to the forefront are going to be less than pleasant. Um... I'm not saying this is unpleasant. I'm just saying it's a different approach to brewing beer and how you flavor it. And this one's kind of thinness. Um, it, it would definitely be crisper if it were colder. And that might be how what, what they're, they targeted. It's not an unpleasant beer. It's tasty. Kind of has a, a thin sweetness to it. And then this this kind of malty fullness, but it's not it's not half the beer. The anger is. It's not unpleasant. It's just there's not a whole lot to it. Okay, Polaner. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's quite interesting. 
So it definitely has more going on. It has a more mouth-filling flavor. Uh, the maltiness, the sweetness is maybe toned down. This is a little bit drier, and I think I like that. I think I like that a lot. Um, it's more like a, a rustic bread. Maybe it's not that there's less sweetness, it's that it's a different type of sweetness. Um, more of a fruit-like sweetness instead of a syrupy sweetness. Uh, maybe berries? I don't know. Um, it has less of the, it doesn't have any bitterness wandering around the edges like the Anger does. It's just more than the Breckenridge. Um, and I wonder if, I, I think that might just be what it is. It's like the Breckenridge times two. It's more, it's a thicker flavor, a stronger flavor, um, and just more present. There's more to it. Um, I think I could really, really enjoy that. Oh, wait. Um, <laughs> Costco has a 24 pack <laughs> of Paul Aner bottles at the uh, Costco right now. Uh, <laughs> I might, uh, <laughs> might run out and grab that. That's really good. I like that. That's a good beer. Okay. Now, Sam Adams. Hmm. Okay. Oh. Oh, that finish is interesting. That's I haven't tasted that in any of the others yet. Um, Breckenridge is more of this family, and the Oktoberfest or the Sam Adams Oktoberfest is different. It's still an Oktoberfest beer. It still has that maltiness. It still has the the slight sweetness. It's still very low bitterness, but the finish is entirely different. The finish is this really nice, like saltine cracker. I like that. That's kind of a little different direction. It makes it stand out, uh, but but still in character. It has a bit of the grassiness. I am tasting that kind of pineapple sweetness to it, though. That's interesting. I wonder where they got that from. If it's their their particular grain bill, um, but it's not unpleasant. It does give it a more I'm not going to say it has a tropical character. It's that the sweetness is just different. You know how pineapple sweetness is kind of that slightly acidic, very, uh, very fruity. I mean, does a fruit, but it just has that slightly acidic, um, really bright sweetness without being like orange kind of acidity. Uh, so that's what that's got, and it's it's distinctly pineapple. So both the nose and the tongue agree on that one. That's that's pineapple. I like that. Um, I like it more than the Breckenridge. But I think the Polaner still has it, and by a substantial amount. Um, they're both very drinkable. Um, I'm not sure that they're interchangeable. Like, because of the different characters, I'm not sure that, uh, that they'd necessarily work with the same, the same sorts of foods. That's, I'm trying to think about it because what you're you're stereotypically you're thinking uh, salty pretzels or uh, bratwurst or something like that uh, salty savory strong flavors and I feel like the planer would stand up to that better and maybe the Sam Adams would <laughs> I don't know uh, be more of an Oktoberfest salad beer. <laughs> I don't know, just wondering about that. And maybe it's because I'm four beers in. Trying to do the try to do this mouth rinse mouth trying to do this mouth rinsing thing, but I don't know how much good it's gonna do. Hmm. Okay. The Widmer, okay, it has the maltiness. The sweetness is pomegranate. Yeah, pomegranate. Um, 
it has maybe a rye cracker finish, maybe? It's definitely to the cracker side of, of the finish. So it's it's closely related, closely related to the same atoms in that way. Um, but it's just thinner, like like the like the Breckenridge. Um, sweetness is a little more muted. It's overall a very pleasant beer. It has a little bit of character going on in the middle, and then zero bitterness. Just this almost apple juice, like just smooth finish, and it's just there and then gone. Um, but I am left breathing malt. That's that's pleasant. I like that actually. That's interesting. It's it's different. Um, so rankings here, and this is my preference. All right, Iinger is the strongest, I believe. It's got the most going on. It has some real good character to it. I like it a lot. Um, it's good, but it might be tied for second place. Uh, the Breckenridge, it's okay. Let me give it another shake. I mean, it's not unpleasant. It's a good beer. Just compared with these, it has less going on. It's a simpler beer. And I'm not sure that's what I want with these. The Pauliner, head and shoulders above the rest. This is a really, really, really good beer. I like that one a lot. Um, Breckenridge, third place. And I'm gonna say that the Anger, the Sam Adams, and the Widmer are tied for second place in my preference rankings here based on there being, sorry, lining these things up the right way. I'm not actually sure what my camera's seeing right here. I'm looking at a reflection of my camera and I realized I really didn't center the shot very well. <laughs> um, so Anger's got, Anger's got this this real strength. It's kind of like the, the bulldog in the fight. It's, it's a good beer. It might just have a little too much going on. Paul Ainer, it's got just the right balance. It's strong, it's complex, um, very pleasant though, and it adds drinkability. Like just, you could do a lot of those. That's that's a really, really nice beer. Um, Sam Adams and Widmer both bring a fruitiness to the sweetness. Um, I'm assuming these are both traditionally brewed, as in they might not necessarily uh, abide by the Ryan Heitzkabat or the special uh, Marzen rules, but it's still just going to be malt, hops, and water. They're probably not actually using any fruit in the brewing process. The flavors they're deriving are, I'm going to assume, from the processing of the grains and the hops. But from those, they get a very, more, very interesting sweetness. All these beers have sweetness. These are just interesting and perhaps more interesting than the others specifically the sweetness side of things. They're both very smooth, and they also finish with that cracker dryness, which frankly is probably my favorite finish. Like this, yeah, the Sam Adams Oktoberfest finish, I think that's probably my favorite finish of the beers. Um, though the planer is a beer I'd happy to, I'd be happy to have in my mouth for a long time. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I guess I should, here, let's line them up this way. Makes more sense. Um, I don't wanna lose which bottle is which. Da, 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 so now this is in order of preference from your right to your left. Is that yeah, they all fit there. Yeah, they're all visible. Cool. Um, Paul Ainer, Iinger, Sam Adams, and Widmer, and Breckenridge. And none of them are bad beers. Anyways, this is Matthew. I've been chewing the brew. And I'll catch y'all on the flip side.